talk to you today about why touch is uh, a very important channel for you to consider and why it's worth thinking about it um, as more than just another channel um, so you see a lot of a lot of stats um, about why touch is so important uh, people are using it more and more uh, it's cannibalizing other channels uh, and we're constantly bombarded by this uh, all the time um, but I want to in you know in today's uh, talk I want to talk about why you know, get to the heart of that and explain why touch is a little bit different um, to, to your other channels. Alongside all this adoption, um, there's the question of ecology. So that mobile devices can be used throughout the day and that unlocks a lot of opportunity to buy where your customers otherwise wouldn't have had a chance. Um, and one of the opportunities there is actually that these touch devices are social, so you can pass them around. Uh, and there's a lot of real world interaction around the device um, that's often forgotten about. Uh, which which makes the thing more engaging. And it's often nothing to do with the actual digital experience. It's just the physical format of the device. But really, the central point um, is how do we make an experience seductive um, and, and satisfying? And what is it about things in the physical world that do the same thing? So a Zippo lighter um, is a kind of functional thing uh, that you use, and I, I don't know if you're a smoker or not, but I've always been fascinated by them, the sound that they make, the fact that they're quite heavy, um, and there's all these things about them which, which make them a little bit different, and they make, they make them things that you want to roll around with your fingers and sort of play with, um, for, for an inexplicable reason. And this is something that people use to, to light cigarettes, but it still has that kind of quality to it. And there's a similar kind of thinking that you can employ to a digital experience, that you can make it you can make it seductive, you can make it something that, that engages all of your senses. So the, the thing has a weight, it has a pressure in your hand, it has a smell associated with it, um, uh, it has a sound, all of these things. Okay? But if we go away from that for a second, um, mobile devices are also, right now, they're opening up another opportunity, which is actually just for more fidelity. So um, the screens that you're seeing on mobile devices are getting better and better. And for the first time, we see that the quality of a phone is better than you know, glossy print. So you can produce better quality imagery on, your, uh, on the iPhone 4S and comparable quality uh, imagery on, on the iPad 3 uh, to print. And that's never happened before. But what is also interesting is that mobile devices have the best screens in terms of color and resolution out of any digital device. And that's a big deal as well. But if we come back to the idea of um, engaging, you know, what is it about the kind of cognition and the interaction with the thing that makes it engaging? You've got all these different ways that you can, that you can engage with uh, an object. Uh, you've got the visual, you've got the auditory, and you've got the kinesthetic or touch. Okay? You can also lick your iPad, but we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> but of all these three sort of uh, uh, you know, different senses that you can engage, Previous uh, digital media didn't, didn't engage touch. You know, you use a mouse, you'd click and, and do things like that. There'd be no sense of physicality in the thing. So we've got this other sense now that we can engage that before we, we couldn't do. Um, and that's, that's a big deal. You know, a lot of people seem to think that touch is just this new thing. And because it's there, you know, we're all going to buy it because, you know, young people just keep buying stuff, don't they? So, um, but there is something a little bit unique to it. And of all the kind of dominant communication systems, um, actually most people's dominant system is touch. We respond most powerfully to touch. If you're producing content, if you're trying to persuade, if you're trying to communicate to people, touch is, is the most powerful way. You, know? you can get people's attention pretty, pretty strongly when you're doing that. But there's something about touch in, on touch you know, devices, phones and tablets, which is a bit different, which is actually it's a bit of an illusion. You're not touching something physical. You're touching a glass screen. Okay. And there's a bit of magic there. So there's, um, there's a clinical condition, uh, and it's very, very rare, that people's, people's senses get mixed up. So when they hear a sound, they see a colour. Okay? It's, sort of, it's a very rare condition that happens to some people. Um, but we kind of experience something similar to that when we engage um, with, with media which engage our kind of touch sense. Okay? So uh, the kinesthetic sense... Part of that is, is gesture. It's a similar kind of sense, your sense of your relationship to the world and, and your own body. 
So in this game, in this, in this connect game, the girl's playing bowling. She doesn't have a bowling ball, ball on her hands. All of that is imagined, okay? The mind projects that. So there's this illusion of playing a game with a physical object. There's an illusion of something in your hand. There's an illusion of that other place. And that's the opportunity of, of touch to, to get the mind to fill in the blanks. So you can see the triangle, you can see the sphere, you can see the Loch Ness Monster, but th those things aren't there. And that's, that's why touch is so different and that's why it has such aggressive adoption and that's why it matters to you if you're trying to do business because it has the opportunity to engage much more profoundly than, than your other channels. So we've got all this opportunity and we see things like this, which is we see websites and apps on, on the iPad. So all that opportunity to kind of engage, uh, engage the imagination and get people to, to kind of go into this other space and to have the illusion of physical objects and moving things, all of that is kind of not being realised right now. It's not seizing attention. And people direct attention towards things relative to everything else that's around. Okay? So if there's something more interesting, a dog barking, someone on the telephone, Twitter, whatever it is that's more interesting, you're going to direct attention at that. And your, your offering in this channel, which has the potential to be very powerful, is just going to be ignored. Or it's investment wasted. Okay? So just how we see the web being kind of reallocated, we see other assets as well from, from print catalogs just being repurposed. And you can get this glossing on top where you get interactive hotspots and things like that. But it's not, it's not engaging that sense. We can go a bit better. I mean, we can still have really high quality assets, so really good quality merchandising. But again, there's no sense of physicality. So the equation that you keep seeing is this, which is touch, it's just the mouse. Your finger is just the mouse pointer. It's not, you're not picking up things, you're not moving them, they don't have weights, they don't create the illusion you know, through sound and momentum that they're a physical thing. You don't, you don't make use of that, that extra opportunity. But people are, and people are doing it with an e-com right now, actually. So anthropology, they have a lot of these are very creative kind of layouts. And in this, you can't see it. Has this got a laser pointer? Yes. Which one is it? The one? If you, let's say you're touching there. You move your hand. As you move it, it will kind of magnify it. So you're driving kind of discovery of these products which you can't see by where you touch. So it's kind of like hovering a, a magnifying glass. It's a really simple layout. It's not particularly sophisticated, but it's putting the person at the center of that. We've also got these set builders. Now, again, it's difficult to see, but you see this element here. As I drag, that panel has, has a threshold where it clicks into place. Okay? So these little touches make that add that sort of satisfying element to, to the interaction. And you can't, you can't do that on the web. This, the thing wouldn't translate with a mouse pointer. People wouldn't even think to try and do it. And that's, that's the opportunity. It's a very subtle thing. And it's a combination of the sound, it's a combination of, of the visual treatment, the way it looks, uh, and the opportunity of actually interacting by touching the thing physically. Another example, which is a bit, um, it's a bit weird, you know, you wouldn't think of it, but it's a fantastic app and it's a great experience, is Skyscanner, which is a kind of booking um, search app. And what's weird about this is actually it's quicker to search for flights on Skyscanner than it is at a desktop. And that's, the, that's the strange thing about it. So a lot of people often talk about uh, the trade-off of being on mobile, less screen space, you don't have a keyboard, but for some strange reason, you know, you, there's some things that work faster, and it's because they have, they have good quality design. Again, tricky to see, but all of that is a surface. It has momentum, you can scroll it, so is that. Roughly about, what, 90% of that screen are two surfaces that you can scroll with momentum, okay? And with a couple of clicks, I can quickly get uh, um, my two flights selected, and I can see straight away what price they're at, and I can get, get to the end of that flow, and all I need to do is press book and I, I put the payment in. So you're looking at something you wouldn't think that you can, make, you can make a bit more tactile, and you just put a couple of interactions into this, and it's an order of magnitude faster, frictionless, and more engaging. There's also little flourishes that you can add. So Flipboard, really, if you think about it, it's an aggregate, it's a content aggregator, but using a slightly different animation. And this is another point, it's a very subtle point, that often slightly novel things just demand more engagement. It's the way your brain is wired. When you see something different, it sticks out, you pay attention to it. And that's another sort of mechanism you can use to, uh, to engage. And 
And people often forget because we're used to these things, but maps work fantastically well. Okay? So there's all these little interactions you can use. So to sum up a couple of points, touch is, has a massive opportunity for anyone who's producing any kind of interactive media. It's got, there's a massive opportunity for e-commerce. Um, one of the speakers said that you know, conversion rates go up mythically um, when people are doing business over tablet. Part of the reason is, is because it's just engaging other sense. But the real point here is that when you start to design, design these experiences a little smarter and you start to really make use of this, there's a huge opportunity there um, to, to create much more engaging experiences.